So in this video, we're looking at big toe extension pails rails in what is considered a combat stance, okay? So the idea here is that this stance is going to more mimic sort of closely when we get into what is considered like deep dorsiflexion of the ankle, okay? So you can see from here the idea of that knee sort of driving over the toe as opposed to where we might typically see a lot of big toe extension work being done in a standing position, okay? A few kind of key points in terms of setup here, like what I have here is like a hard solid lacrosse ball, something like a yoga block, anything that's sort of small, compact, and is stiff in some way. A little bit of softness is okay, but make sure it's not too soft that it's almost going to move when we go to contract into it. You can see here what I have set up is like a heavy dumbbell. The advantage here is I'm actually gonna be able to grab the dumbbell and I'm gonna be able to keep my weight sort of shifted forward. What you might find over time is you get into the pales rails position, you're sitting in your stretch, so your passive stretch, and you're actually finding that the body is gonna sort of push away to some degree. So this allows me to keep my weight forward, maintains as much dorsiflexion as I can while I also hold a little big toe extension, all right? What we find as well with a lot of the big toe extension work, remember to some degree that the toes might bunch up a little bit. We might have to sort of stop and sort of play with things a little bit while we set ourselves up for our passive stretch. So that's exactly what we're gonna do, okay? So we're gonna set ourselves up in the position. I've got the ball sort of lodged in here against the weight so that it's not gonna budge inch. I'm just going to get myself in where I can sort of shift, get my big toe, toe. I also, as you can see, have a cushion for underneath my shin. You can see this combat stance in some sense. I'm pretty much resting what is like on the shin specifically as opposed to being up on the knee as well. So remember with that, we're trying to do our best to sort of sit down into it. You can roll a towel up to sort of help the ankle as well. You can see here by positioning this at the ankle, it's actually making things a little bit easier to sort of support my weight as well, all right? So keep that in mind as you play around the setup. But as I said, you, you'll kind of end up adjusting within the first few seconds. You'll kind of adjust the position to find something comfortable, splay the toes a little bit. We'll set our timer just because we're going to work through a pales rail set and we're going to go through sort of the position from here. So as I was saying, you're going to do your best to sort of achieve a high degree of big toe extension with that ball. As I said, it might be something like a yoga block, so it's almost directly upright and that might be, you know, where you're at this moment in time, something that you can work with. But I also need to make sure to some degree here then that my ankle or I'm sort of driving that knee forward into as much dorsiflexion as possible, really just to take advantage of this position. So that's why it's good to have this weight. I can sort of pull myself in and what I'm actually you're going to find is I'm going to find a very deep stretch on what is kind of like the inside of my ankle running all the way up on that kind of medial or that inside of the malleolus. So you can't really see it from this position here. I'll come out of position. I want you to stay there because we still have our timer on. But what I'm finding is I'm finding that deep stretch all the way kind of up through the shin. You can see this sort of backside, this medial edge of the ankle is really where I'm going to feel a deep degree of this stretch because we're trying to push ourselves into so much dorsiflexion. We've still got another minute to go. Remember, as always, with a lot of the pales rails work, you, you can adjust a little bit as time goes on, but make sure that the adjustments are really kept kind of the first few seconds of the stretch. From here then, once you sort of have yourself in that stretch position, feeling it probably primarily in the joint, and as I said, at the back of the ankle, you're now focusing on your breath. You're taking those big, deep inhales long exhales, really trying to put your conscious awareness around that area that's sort of giving you a bit of feedback and actually trying to release that tension. Release, release, release all the way through. Okay, still almost there with our timer, still about another 20 seconds. Remember, we're gonna do our best to sort of create as much tension as we can with the body. It's gonna be very easy for us to kind of create upper body tension because we've got the weight here. You might not have one, that's more than okay. You can clasp the fists together, you can do whatever you want to to sort of create some tension with your trunk and your core, okay? So what we're gonna do is we have ourselves in a good position. We're gonna take that breath in, pack it into your lower abdomen, big brace around it. Three, two, one, let's start to contract down. So very slowly, I'm gonna start driving my big toe down into the block, okay, into the uh, ball. I'm just trying to slowly create about 10% more tension with every second that goes by. As slow as a build as you want to go for and as maximum an effort as you want to go for. Ideally, you're working up to that greatest, safest max effort, that 100% relative to you. You're really just making sure you're driving with solely the big toe. Nothing else is really driving. You're not driving through your ankle or anything like that. Very slowly, we're gonna go for that rails contraction in the opposite direction. You're gonna try, imagine, lifting your big toe towards the ankle. So everything on the front side of the, of the foot now, that tendon that runs all the way from sort of the front of the toe up uh, through the shin, you're gonna try and get that to pronounce and sort of lift to some degree, okay? It might not show, and that's more than okay, but you're doing your best to lift off the ball. Now you're gonna relax, take a big exhale, 
you just had a high degree of tension in the body, so you want to release that tension again. And focusing just as much, I know when we think about our Pales Rails work, we're really focusing on the tension that we're creating, but it's just as important to sort of let that tension go, and that allows us to get the deeper stretch position. It shows that we have good control over the area when we can be both create tension and let it go. Okay, adjust the position as you need to. If you need to adjust sort of the foot on the on the floor, if you need to adjust the toes, you need to adjust the ball or anything like that, be sure to do it in this sort of like break in between. But ideally you can stay within big toe extension, not come out of it or anything like that. Keeping the knee sort of over the toes and we're about to get into our second contraction. So deep sort of pull, big inhale, pack it into the lower abdomen, very slowly now. I've got tension running throughout my body and now I'm starting to drive down with the big toe. So I'm really now feeling all of the area that was just getting a stretch is now building up tension, 10% every second. So 10, 20, 30, all the way up to my greatest, safest max effort. When I say max effort, I mean you should really be squeezing every muscle possible. When it comes to everything on the underside of the foot, you're making sure that that's the kind of primary focus, everything that's really driving that big toe down into the ball. High degree of tension, three, two, one, opposite way, uh, quicker build. You're trying to pull the toe towards the ankle. Really try to lift off the ball. Make sure the four toes aren't doing a thing. They're staying down on the floor and you're just trying to create a little bit of space on the opposite side, really pulling off, pulling off, pulling off, almost there, three, two, one, big exhale for me, let all that musculature around the foot relax, the tension is dissipating, it's turning to jello, everything is relaxing. Long exhales again. <sighs> Letting everything go. Remember, stay here for a bit, just as important to get that relaxation part in. Now we should have definitely found that there was a high degree of effort of all the tissue and structure of the big toe. If it's an area of yours that's sort of an issue, you might not have been able to tolerate as deep a stretch. So if you have to adjust for next time, you can maybe bring yourself out of the stretch a little bit more. You can all come out of the stretch right now as the timer is gone, but you may have to adjust it where say, for example, as opposed to positioning yourself so close to the ball, you just position yourself a little bit of way. You're not as in high degree uh, uh, an amount of big toe extension. I know it's sort of hard to see from this angle here, but basically it was a case of me either being, say, in this position here or really being jammed up into a lot of big toe extension. So it really depends on how much you can tolerate in the joint at the moment, but certainly over time that's going to build, that's going to get better and better, and you're going to be able to really sit into that deep position with no issue as well. Another thing I suppose is just this position as well, with the, like the ankle and the knee. Um, if you haven't built up a lot of tolerance kind of sitting in that position, um, it might be a little bit more there might be a little bit of discomfort you can always place like something like a yoga block actually underneath the bum kind of sitting between what would be like your bum and your heel that might be another way to adjust if you have to but ideally you're building up the strength um, and the tolerance over time to be able to sit in that deep position as well okay and um, so a lot going on there and obviously a lot of key points that we want to make sure we sort of nail and um, in terms of getting the most from this pales rails position but really really good in terms of actually looking at sort of deep dorsiflexion while also sort of focusing primarily like it's going to help us achieve greater amounts of deep dorsiflexion dorsiflexion if we actually work on big toe extension in dorsiflexion as well. So that was your big toe extension pales rails in a combat stance. If you have any questions on that position or that pales rails drill, be sure to let me know in the comment section. And be sure to like the video, subscribe to the page if you want to see more videos like this that are going to help you really open up the sort of joint workspace, that mobility and strength that we want to see in, in, in all our areas, okay? Um, so yes, like, like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.